I have... Oh my god, it's already started! I have absolutely no idea what to expect from this particular game of StarCraft 2. So, what I've got for you today is a game from the currently ongoing ProBots season. Now, ProBots is a StarCraft 2 tournament where the players aren't human, but they are custom-made AIs. They're artificial intelligences. And as far as I understand, they have absolutely no limitations. So, let's have a look right here at the APM tab. Yeah, I was gonna say, they seem to be selecting workers and forcing them onto the close-by mineral fields over and over and over again. Okay, I'm excited to find out exactly what ended up going down in this game. I haven't seen a match like this, I don't think, ever. I have no idea if anybody's interested in watching a game like this either, but I figured let's go ahead and give it a try. I'm excited for this. So, we find ourselves on the map Infestation Station, where in the top right hand corner, playing right here with the Blue Terran SCVs, we have an artificial intelligence who goes by the name of Dominion Dog. Alright. The opponent in the opposite corner. I guess that's, by the way, the creator of the AI, right? This is the AI's god. Playing right here with the Red Terran SCVs in the opposite corner. We're looking inside of the main base of Catrock, who already said earlier, Strategy Benchy Cyclone. Always nice to tell your opponent exactly what your plan is. All right. So, as far as I understand, the bots have absolutely no limitations. So, in the past, for example, we did have Google's DeepMind Alpha Star, right? That one had, like, an APM limitation, but that is not the case here in this particular game. Which means that the units that these bots will choose to play are probably gonna be very different. Normally, in Terran versus Terran, we have a unit composition that's based around Marines and Siege Tanks. And I guess Marines are still gonna be a really good option, but Siege Tanks just aren't really that microable. And then, you know, if the opponent can have perfect splits against your Marines, right? I guess Siege Tanks with their splash damage are also just not that helpful. I don't know. We're gonna find out together, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if the strategies that we're gonna see are gonna be very different than what normally humans would be playing. Okay, so I asked the tournament organizer a couple of details and he sent me this message. He says, the bot makers have control over the strategies and different bots have different ways of choosing their strats. Some learn and change strategies based on what has happened in the game previous, if they're playing a series, or if they played against each other on the AI ladder. So if they know what the opponent did in the past, they may very well adjust their strategies. And obviously, the bot authors also have an influence over what strategies are actually, well, being played by the AIs in the first place. Okay, so it is going to be a uh, Reaper-esque opener. Interestingly enough, we're not going to be sending that one across the map. I don't know, so... One interesting thing about Google's DeepMind, right? When it first was introduced, for example, we found out that Stalkers are an insanely overpowered unit when they are controlled to the extreme. I don't know if you guys remember that, that is quite a few years ago, but it turns out when Stalkers can be perfectly microed to target fire just the right unit, so say for example, I don't know what the number is, right, but say it takes seven Stalker shots to shoot at a, at a siege tank and kill it in one hit, you would never have the AI get any sort of over damage done, right, like it would never be over killing a unit. I can't imagine that we're going to be seeing that as well in this particular game, so it's a double Stargate start right here for the Catrock player. Okay, fair enough. It's a Cyclone as well, but I guess we already knew that. It's gonna be Benji Cyclone right here. Coming up for the Terran player in red. A lot of gas is being mined here. So you can see the number above the command center and above the gas constantly change. This mule indeed gets pushed away from the mineral line. This is something we see humans also mix in from time to time. Ketrick actually hitting a supply block here for just a moment, but I guess those are all calculated in. I'm not really gonna be checking for perfection, I suppose, right? Because I... Hmm. This is also interesting, though. Not instantly building the add-ons. Instead, we've got three barracks right now, all just producing a marine each. No reactor, no tech lab, no stim pack or anything like that. Is something like stim pack good if you have perfect micro? I have absolutely no idea. I'm not sure. Command center gets started up, so you can see that there is not quite... What? Tag 0420? T112. Alright. Anyways, you can see that that wasn't quite perfection, right? Like, the SCV already had minerals as it was traveling down towards the low ground here to start up the command center. So I'm not exactly sure even how you would go about making an artificial intelligence, but I can imagine that, especially with these APMs just... <laughs> Going through the roof, we're already getting up to five digits here. I can't imagine that the micro is just gonna be ludicrous. 
Another thing actually that the tournament organizer mentioned is that the bots will never GG out. Because I guess in the bot's mind, theoretically speaking, there's always a chance that the opponent can disconnect or something. So um, flying your command center to the corner of the map may not just be a strategy in Silver League, but also <laughs> between the bots. I'm not exactly sure what to expect, but there's probably going to be a moment where it becomes very clear that one of these two players is out of the game, but they will not be leaving. So I may very well have to start fast forwarding a little bit here and there. I'm a little surprised, actually, by the passivity. I'm also a little bit surprised by the planetary fortress on the low ground. Why do we have a planetary fortress over here? Wouldn't you say that an orbital command is infinitely better? Third CC has been started up as well. We've got a lot of useless micro here going on. This is micro, though, that really wouldn't be possible by a human. Look at that raven with the little uh, the little dip over there. You see, oh my god. Is that a, ra a raven mating dance over here? It's a weird ritual. I've never seen that butt dip of the <laughs> of the rave. Okay, it's gonna be moving out. Okay, we're gonna be seeing a little bit of regression. A very passive though. First six minutes of this game. So two Vikings, one Raven, one Banshee, and a Cyclone walk into a bar. Two Cyclones walk into three Cyclones walk into a bar. Hyperflight Rotors coming up as well. Plus one infantry weapons is the first upgrade that Dominion Dog ever finished. Okay, we have some lock-ons here on all of the targets. Oh, a little bit of a miss rally over there. Fair enough. Actually, the Banshee's also not quite getting that much value in. Yeah, these plus one upgraded Marines, I guess that's where our red player here ran into a couple of problems. Those, uh... <laughs> those plus one upgraded Marines do not mess around. Nice little bit of target firing as well, but in the end, the Marines here in blue managed to push this back relatively easily. Rather than rushing out any of the infantry upgrades, for some reason the AI decides to go for the building armor. Which is nice, I guess, because it gives some additional armor to your buildings and bunkers and whatnot can be a little bit... But it doesn't really add that much value at this point in the game. I really wonder what kind of unit compositions, though, we're gonna arrive at, right? Because early game Terran versus Terran is a bit of a mess anyways, I think everybody's well aware of that. You can make basically any unit in the earlier stages here, my god. Look at <laughs> look at that medevac. What the heck? Okay. Yeah, sure, that's one way of doing it, I guess. Um early game turn for Stern, you can make any unit within the first five minutes anyway, so it's all over the place, but what sort of mid game are we gonna settle on? Here comes this army forward once again. Okay, get spotted. We do have some detection, of course, but we gotta be very careful. Okay, these benchies are suddenly getting a lot of value in. Can we get a scan here? No? Okay, we have an interference matrix on one of the benchies, as the raven finally does show up once again. Turns out cloaked or not though, detection or not, these units are still gonna be <laughs> micro to the absolute maximum. Okay. Now I wonder what the top tier StarCraft players would look like with 10,000 APM. That would be kind of crazy. Anyways, we've got command centers taken all over the map, extra gases are coming up as well. The minion dog only just now fires up the fourth command center, so if you look right here at the income, yeah. I mean, he's got some good income for now, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's gonna be falling behind here momentarily. A lot of uh, over-harvesting as well inside of that main base. We've got a missile turret going on, I guess, but 14 out of 8 workers in the mineral line is not quite optimal. So I really don't know, by the way, what skill level these bots should be, right? Because technically they don't have any limitations, and you can see that APM-wise they're incredibly fast. But APM does not necessarily mean skill, right? So like, would this be Master League? Would it be Grandmaster? Would it be Pro Level? Like, would a professional gamer win against these AIs? I think judging by the early game strategies, they would get absolutely destroyed. The AIs, that is. I think the pro gamers would have... A pretty good time, but as the game progresses though, my god, look at this marine splitting over here. Or at least, you know, at least an attempt as far as that goes. Oh, we're targeting the SCVs that we're trying to go for a repair, I guess. <laughs> He's really trying to kill that Hellion over there. Those attack markers, by the way, are for the player in blue. Siege tank here, trying his very best. We have these units being micro like absolute mad. A strange little mating ritual here from the Cyclone as well, as it's trying to just force as many repairs off of that planetary fortress as possible. Maybe that's why we have planetary fortresses set up, though, this early on. Benchy's here, once again coming in. Gas error corrected by a Catrock. Okay, fair enough. 
We are going to need to see some micro back right there. Fair enough here as well. The Marines are getting loads of... Oh, okay. Yeah, they're getting loads of additional commands here as both players are now going north of 15,000 APM. Fair enough. All right. In the end, though, Dominion Dog's attack does get pushed away. There's one Viking here still being a nuisance, but the Cyclone has shown up as well. Getting a million attack commands over and over and over again. I guess that allows him eventually to get shut down. Okay. So who got the better end of the trade there? I mean, I do think that the... Well, the supply count right now is definitely in favor of the player in blue. However, Ketrok's economy here is really solid. He's got a, a really great amount of control of his side of the map as well. Plus, the upgrades are really not looking that bad either. So we actually have a... Sky Terran transition, which is kind of interesting here too. Doubling down on those, uh, yeah, those flying units. We have additional starports right now also coming up, which is funny. So rather than focusing on siege tanks and marines and all that, right? We're gonna go into like, look at the sincere lack of siege tanks in general. We had that, I guess, siege tank earlier. Yeah, two of them have gone down. We have a third one over here too, but they don't really seem to be that great here overall. What are the marines doing, guys? You're being shot at by a tank! Alright, there we go. Eventually they are moving in. Planetary Fortress, of course, does deal splash damage. Plus it does have building armor, I suppose, so... It's gonna have a relatively easy time holding on, but loads of SCVs have gone down. Ketrok has killed zero workers. Dominion Dog, at this point, is already closing in on his 50th SCV kill. <laughs> Planetary Fortress, though, now has 25 confirmed kills to its name as well. We've got a little bit of a surround over here. Reinforcing Terran units in blue are marching through the center of the map, just straight down. I don't think they're really achieving that much. No. This is a very scary Terran settlement here, man. There's not really a whole lot the player in blue can do. My god, the, the, the micro here on these units is kind of wild, though. A meager 1200 APM there for a little bit from Dominion Dog. Wake up our Viking pilots, the enemy is getting flyers? You think that's uh, Ketrok writing that, or is that the AI writing that? I have no idea. I feel like that must be a human, because an AI would do a better job capitalizing letters. Anyways, Siege Tank over there in the tall grass did end up, well, I guess the smoke instead. It did end up getting sniped. Couple more interference matrixes do connect here. The Raven putting in some work, but the counterattack here from Ketrok is still very, very helpful. He's now pumping out eight Benshees at once. Eight Benshees at once. I mean, we're gonna be at a very large amount of Benshees here very soon. Plus, they're gonna be well upgraded as well. That is... Not to be underestimated. Like, Marines are good. They do have Stimpak now as well, which is really helpful. But it's it's not like the Benshees, when they're microed correctly, can't take on these units. Eventually, though, the Planetary Fortress has gone down. Dominion Dog is trying to now land a command center over here on the left side of the map, but... That is going to be very difficult, because there's been a Terran base in red for a very long time. He is, however, pushing in. Additional starports are coming up. We still have eight Benchies on the production tab at once. Where are all of those Benchies? Okay, there they come. From the main base, straight into the fight as well. And with good control, I do think they're going to be able to push this back. With good control. I mean, what about amazing control? Nicely done. Fight over here on the left side as well as this base tried landing over here, but apparently Ketrok's base eventually got found. The Cyclone once again doing its little, yeah, dance over here? I'm not sure, dude. Do the Cyclone! Everybody Cyclone now! I love it. Big fight over here in the middle as well, trying to get some work in. <laughs> Marines have a hard time walking down the ramp. They really want to continuously cancel that Vespian Geyser when it gets re-attempted. Same over here for Jimmy and Mark. A very strange ritual indeed. 27, 28, 30! There we go, 31,000 average actions per minute right there. Maybe not average, actually. No, current actions per minute instead. Those Benchies are putting in so much work, though. Is the Benchy the over... Is the Benchy the stalker of the Terran army? I doubt it, but they certainly are very good against ground units because they are very microable. As long as there's enough Vikings up in the air, I suppose, to get rid of the opposing units. <laughs> and you don't have any Vikings gunning down the Benchies themselves. Life is pretty great. Unsurprisingly, by the way, units like Battlecruisers here are not being produced. At least not yet. 
Vikings are, or sorry, Vipers are gonna, Vipers? Ravens are gonna be coming up as well. I feel like I may have called them Vipers earlier in this particular cast, didn't I? Anyway, sorry, this cast has been all over the place because I'm trying to make sense of a very weird situation. So if I'm miscalling units, if I'm calling Marines Marauders and vice versa, no Marauders either, by the way, either, which is also kind of interesting. Yeah, I guess the units that technically don't have a lot of value, like the units that are more passive are, I guess, the ones that you don't really want to play. Look at this control here on the benches, though. Absolutely insane. Okay, 23 of them are available right now. Nine of them have gone down. Yes, the Dominion Dog player has been at an advantage, at least supply-wise, for a long time. But I actually don't think I like his position very much anymore. The unit traits here have just been heavily in favor of Ketrock, who's getting in a ton of value here with those benches of his. Couple siege tanks as well, just positioned in very strategic spots, trying to get the best of it, or trying to make the best of a strange situation. That raven over there, sometimes called a viper, uh, apparently manages to sneak away. Siege tank over here, though, in a little bit of trouble, but yeah, the marines are stutter stepping into it. We love these auto turrets as well. Siege tank does fall, but that was a very expensive cleanup. At the same time, the dance over here on the right side is finally concluded as the planetary fortress does fall. So as Vikings, a medevac or two, and just a whole lot of marines from Dominion Dog, whereas it's full Sky Terran right here for Ketro. So he's not even really bothering with any marines himself. Yeah. I guess this is the most microable Terran mech army of all time. As long as those blue Vikings are out of the sky, everything else should be reasonable, right? Those. Yeah, those, those Vipers are putting in so much work. Here come the Benchies once again. No detection available. So these Benchies are having a grand old time. We're gonna need to see a scan. There is a missile turret over there. So if the Marines back up to that location, they're gonna be all right. Very interesting. Dominion Dog over here gets that Raven, I guess, which is important just to serve as a detector. But it's like one Viking shot away from going down, or one auto turret shot away from uh, from going down here as well. There's another lock on, it will get sniped as well. The Cyclone will have to pay the price. What in the world is going on, man? <laughs> I think what we're looking at though, is Ketrop getting the upper end of all of these trades. Yeah. Benchies, when microed perfectly, or at least close to perfectly, are absolutely ludicrous. Marines obviously have a lot of value, but Dominion Dog really needs to group them up together a little bit more. They're constantly running to their deaths just in the middle of nowhere. Uh, the Ravens over here are thinking about uh, going onto that orbital command, but I guess they don't have an attack. There are a couple Vikings in the mix. I mean, they could drop auto turrets if they want to, but Benchies once again coming in from the back, trying their very best. There's a Raven up in the air, so at least that cloaking is going to be nullified, but the Marines are getting killed, and well, now that Raven is also out of the equation, although there's another one that's already replaced it. Looks like the Vikings, together with the, uh, the Ravens here, are going to be able to push back some units. But Dominion Dog does stabilize in that area of the map. I wonder how often comebacks happen, especially in a mirror matchup, when it's AI versus AI. Like, clearly, Ketrock here is is trying... Like, he's getting he's getting good trades, but he's not really capitalizing on the advantage, right? Like, he's not really going in for the kill. I do believe he could be pushing up towards the high ground, but maybe the AI has decided, you know what, if I push up to the high ground, I also run the risk of, well, accidentally being caught off guard. So if I just let the game go on for longer, I'll probably be okay. But at the same time, this is now allowing Dominion Dog to get back into the swing of things. The Marines here, oh my god, fall onto the Planetary Fortress once again. We have a round of auto turrets going down. <laughs> I think those units are pretty dead. Yeah, don't do it. No, don't do it, Jimmy. Jimmy, stop! How is Jimmy and Mark doing? Okay, I think they're probably dead. Yeah, this Planetary over here has got four confirmed kills. No Liberators, by the way, either. I think Liberators could also be a unit that can get a lot of value, right? I'm not sure, though. Maybe Benchies are kind of like Liberators, but worse. When APM is no longer a problem, maybe harassing a mineral line with, you know, these units instead is better. Oh my god, they decide to target down that missile turret, but that does allow the Marines to get underneath. We need some detection here. Have we seen scans going down, by the way? I feel like we haven't seen any orbital scans. 
Are they just using the ravens as detectors? Hold up right now. Maybe there have been scans and I just didn't notice them. Maybe there was even a scan as I was already thinking about that and I just didn't notice it because it's so common and I just kind of zone out, but I feel like... Well, I mean, they definitely don't have energy saved up. I feel like Dominion Dog definitely could have killed more of those Benchies over the course of this game. Auto turrets, though, getting a lot of value, and there's he's dropping off another one. How many Marines have died? 493 Marines. Only two on the side of Ketra. That is uh, very nice. Trying to create a choke over here. Ketra was pretty far behind in the earlier stages of the game when it comes to the supply. But you can see right now that he is starting to inch further and further ahead. Dominion Dog just rallying in as many units as possible. That bunker from the early game still around and kicking. We have... Oh my lord. Did Ketruk just drop about a dozen mules to take the mineral fields here from the opponent? That is one way to be toxic. I had no idea that AIs would be bad mannering the opponent right there dropping about a dozen mules on the opponent's mineral fields i mean it is a way to of course make sure that they don't continue mining once that base is run out it's going to be difficult to get much done there is that expansion here on the right side though that has never been harassed because ketrox ai here has never gotten vision of it we have had so many ravens go down wait actually i feel like i've seen so many ravens go down but it's actually been so few only six in total? That's wild. I feel like I've seen about as many as, as Marines. Okay, maybe not quite. That, that seems a bit extreme, but... Okay. Command Center there gets cancelled. Mules have happily returned some minerals, and they're gonna continue mining some more in the top left and corner. Dominion Dog's supply is dwindling, but his fighting spirit is still going strong. I guess, though, that we are now witnessing the beginning of the end. There's not really much of a strategy here anymore for Dominion Dog, so I think it's about time that I start pressing here. Oh my god, he just made a command center in the top left -hand corner as well. I think I'm gonna fast forward a little bit throughout this game. We are now on times four speed. Players trying to get as much value in as possible, but... I think Ketrok is, yeah, gonna be able to obtain the victory here. There's really not much anymore that Dominion Dog can do about this. What a game, man. I wonder if I can convert my minerals into Bitcoin. It'd be worth about as much, eh? <laughs> I still have some Bitcoin. I wish I didn't. Anyways, if you guys are interested in seeing more games from ProBots, let me know down below in the comment section. Like I said, I have absolutely no idea how many people are keen to watch games like this, but it is truly fascinating. I'll go ahead and post the link to the ProBots YouTube channel down below in the description as well. So if you want to watch some more games, that would be the best place to go ahead and check them out. Shout out to the tournament organizers for sending over this replay. I really appreciate it. But for now, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.